A nuclear flask is a shipping container that is used to transport active nuclear materials between nuclear power station and spent fuel reprocessing facilities. Spent nuclear fuel shipping casks are used to transport spent nuclear fuel used in nuclear power plants and research reactors to disposal sites such as the Nuclear Reprocessing Center at Kogmala Hague site. Railway carried flasks are used to transport spent fuel from nuclear power stations in the UK and the Sellafield Spent Nuclear Fuel Reprocessing Facility. Each flask weighs more than 50 tons, and transports usually not more than 2.5 tons of spent nuclear fuel. Over the past 35 years, British Nuclear Fuels PLC and its subsidiary PNTL have conducted over 14,000 cask shipments of SNF worldwide, transporting more than 9,000 tons of SNF over 16 million miles via road, rail, and sea without a radiological release. In the UK a series of public demonstrations were conducted in which spent fuel flasks were subjected to simulated accident conditions. A randomly selected flask from the production line was first dropped from a tower. The flask was dropped in such a way that the weakest part of it would hit the ground first. The lid of the flask was slightly damaged but very little material escaped from the flask. A little water escaped from the flask but it was thought that in a real accident that the escape of radioactivity associated with this water would not be a threat to humans or their environment. For a second test the same flask was fitted with a new lid, filled again with steel bars and water before a train was driven into it at high speed. The flask survived with only cosmetic damage while the train was destroyed. Although referred to as a test, the actual stresses the flask underwent were well below what they are designed to withstand as much of the energy from the collision was absorbed by the train and also in moving the flask some distance. This flask is on display at the training center at Haysham 1 power station. Introduced in the early 1960s, Magnox flasks consists of four layers, an internal skip containing the waste, guides and protectors surrounding the skip, all contained within the 370mm thick steel main body of flask itself, with characteristic cooling fins, and a transport cabin of panels which provide an external housing. Flasks for waste from the later advanced gas-cooled reactor power stations are similar, but have thinner steel main walls at 90mm thick thickness, to allow room for extensive internal lead shielding. The flask is protected by a bolt hasp which prevents the content from being accessed during transit. All the flasks are owned by the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, the owners of direct rail services. A train conveying flasks would be hauled by two locomotives, either Class 20 or Class 37, but Class 66 and Class 68 locomotives are increasingly being used. Locomotives are used in pairs as a precaution in case one fails en route. Greenpeace protests that flasks in rail transit pose a hazard to passengers standing on platforms, although many tests performed by the Health and Safety Executive have proved that it is safe for passengers to stand on the platform while a flask passes by. The crashworthiness of the flask was demonstrated publicly when a British Rail Class 46 locomotive was forcibly driven into a derailed flask at 100 miles per hour, the flask sustaining minimal superficial damage without compromising its integrity, while both the flatbed wagon carrying it and the locomotive were more or less destroyed. Flasks were heated to temperatures of over 800 degrees Celsius to prove safety in a fire. There have been several accidents involving flasks, including derailments, collisions, and even a flask being dropped during transfer from train to road, with no leakage having occurred. Problems have been found where flasks sweat, when small amounts of radioactive material absorbed into paint migrate to the surface, causing contamination risks. Studies identified that 10-15% to of flasks in the United Kingdom were suffering from this problem, but none exceeded the international recommended safety limits. Similar flasks in mainland Europe were found to marginally exceed the contamination limits during testing, and additional monitoring procedures were put into place. In order to reduce the risk, current UK flask wagons are fitted with a lockable cover to ensure any surface contamination remains within the container, and all containers are tested before shipment, with those exceeding the safety level being cleaned until they are within the limit. Between 1975 and 1977 Sandia National Laboratories conducted full-scale crash tests on spent nuclear fuel shipping casks. Since 1965, approximately 3,000 shipments of spent nuclear fuel have been transported safely over the U.S.'s highways, waterways, and railroads. Nuclear waste would never be transported together with hazardous materials on the same train or track. The results of this evaluation also strongly indicate that neither spent nuclear fuel particles nor fission products would be released from a spent fuel transportation package carrying intact spent fuel involved in a severe tunnel fire such as the Baltimore Tunnel Fire.
none of the three package designs analyzed for the Baltimore Tunnel fire scenario experienced internal temperatures that would result in rupture of the fuel cladding. By comparison there has been limited spent nuclear fuel transport in Canada. Transportation casks have been designed for truck and rail transport and Canada's regulatory body, the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, granted approval for casks, which may be used for barge shipments as well. The Commission's regulations prohibit the disclosure of location, routing and timing of shipments of nuclear materials, such as spent fuel. Nuclear flasks containing spent nuclear fuel are sometimes transported by sea for the purposes of reprocessing or relocation to a storage facility. The INF acronym stands for Irradiated Nuclear Fuel, though the classification also covers plutonium and high-level waste cargoes. Vessels used for the transportation of spent nuclear fuel are typically purpose-built and are commonly referred to as nuclear fuel carriers. Risks of transporting of irradiated fuel and nuclear materials in the UK, Large and Associates, for Greenpeace.